Good morning, YouTube. Today, I want to talk all about pre-purchase inspections. So, are you recording all of the nefarious activities? If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan. This is my garage, and this channel is all about the supercar ownership experience, buying and selling them, maintaining them, DIY work on them. And today, we're going to talk about PPIs, or pre-purchase inspections. So, there's a lot of misinformation about these PPIs, and I'm going to get some flack for this, but... I actually don't like PPIs. I've actually never done a PPI on any of my cars, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't do them. I'm not advocating that. I'm just saying I personally don't think they're worth the money for me. Now, I also feel a little bit more confident than I would say most people in my ability to assess a car's current status. All a PPI is going to do is going to tell you information about that car to the best of the ability of the person doing the PPI. And that's where these things kind of have a great divergence. So the interesting thing about these PPIs is that they can range from a couple hundred dollars to well over a thousand dollars. In fact, I've seen them over two thousand dollars which gets pretty crazy to think about. They're not doing that much, they're just kind of looking at the car. But sometimes they are doing a lot and then it starts to become more worth it. So some of these PPIs, they can be done in a few hours, and other times they take an entire day or even more. So it's really a wide, wide variance on these PPIs, and that's why I'm gonna say the most important thing to know about these PPIs is know what you're getting into before you give the money away. If you're going to get a PPI, ask to get a copy of what they're gonna do before they do it. Just say, hey, I would like to see what you're going to do in a PPI and what I can expect to get for my money because that way you can actually say, okay, this is something that's valuable or no, this is a complete waste of money. So a lot of people kind of think PPIs are this end all be all truth telling thing that's gonna give you all the information about the car. And sometimes that's kind of true and other times it's completely crap. There's a lot of things that PPIs can do that are kind of hard to do on your own. So for example, we are going to take this Ferrari F430 over to my buddy Josh's shop and it's going to get a PPI. As you know, we just sold this car at auction after doing a restoration or project car, whatever you want to call it. We got the car to be nice and perfect for its new owner. It's been purchased at auction. We did pretty good on this car, made a little bit of money, and now the buyer's financing company is actually requiring him to get a PPI, which is a little unusual, but okay, so we'll jump through these hoops to make his financing company happy. So we're gonna take it over to Josh's shop. He's gonna do a PPI in just a minute, and we're gonna show you what Josh is actually doing on a PPI and show you what you get for your money. So there's a few things that Josh can do that I can't even do, which is he can do things like read the clutch information. So that is something that even with my launch computer, I really can't tell you how much clutch life is on this car. We should see a very, large amount of clutch life left because after all the clutch was replaced less than 2,000 miles ago. We hope to see that, but we don't know. It's entirely possible he's gonna see something else. But there's a lot of other things that Josh is gonna check on that would be good to know for this buyer. So let's head on over to Josh's shop. He's gonna do a PPI in this thing and tell you all about it. But before we do, there's something else we're gonna do today, which is last night I had one of my phone consultations. So if you didn't know, go to my website, normalguysupercar.com, and there you can actually hire me to help you with supercar purchases or selling them or whatever. One of my viewers who's buying a Ferrari California has a deal on the table and he sent the car off to get a PPI and the PPI came back and it's horrible. Basically they said that there's more things that need to be corrected than the value of the car. They said there's about $75,000 in things wrong with this car and he's only buying it for $80,000. So that's a huge red flag of either the PPI is crap or the car is crap. So let's go over that in a minute here and take a look at it. And I'm gonna have Josh go over it too and give his professional opinion. And we can see what's going on with this PPI because something ain't right. Okay, we're at Josh's shop and we're gonna get this 430 up there and he's gonna inspect it. You guys remember Josh? <laughs> so. Uh, if you didn't know, Josh has an Instagram page, Exotic Power and Performance, it's right here. You can go visit him if you need to get some stuff done with exotics. Go for, yeah, there's just a couple Ferraris here. Oh wait, there's hiding one there too. So we've now got quite a few. And then there's a couple Ferrari engines over there. Yeah. They detach really easily from the cars. They detach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In less than one day, you can remove a Ferrari engine. Yay! What sort of stuff are we gonna check on? All of the stuff. So all, all the stuff. When I ran the dealership, 
I made check-in and check-out sheets for quality control for service cars. So we're going to use this as a guideline. Obviously, we get to cheat with your car because you photo documented going or video documented going through the car and solving a bunch of common failures. So a lot of stuff I would look at. Yeah, kind of already been taken care of. Yeah. So we got a pair of check sheets here Ooh. that we're going to buzz through okay. and give you an idea. It's really just a basic health. You know, I'm not going to tear the motor open and tear the gearbox open. And, you know, I'm not trying to find work or solve customer complaints. We just want to make sure the car is intact and we'll pass inspections and there's nothing hanging off the bottom of it. So, you know, we'll check fluids. We'll check the tires, even though I already know that it's got brand new tires on it. <laughs> check brakes, you know, pads and rotors. Check all the lights. Make sure the wheels are torqued. Make sure all the lights work. Make sure all the buttons on the inside work. Like I say, it's kind of an awkward PPI because you already checked everything in yeah. photo. You well, know, his, recorded. The, believe it or not, the guy who's bought the car, his financing company wants this. That's what he said. Yeah. So, which is, I mean, I've heard of that, but sure. it's, it's not common. Yeah. So to me, that basically means they want an invoice with a letterhead and they want a document saying that somebody, uh, you know, is taking responsibility for saying that the car is safe. So this isn't so much about picking the car apart because we already know it's a good car. It's about kind of going through the motions and creating a paper trail to make the finance company right. happy. I think he so. also wants the clutch life just out of curiosity. But yeah, I mean, you already know this, but the clutch was just replaced less than 2000 miles ago. So. Yeah. Yeah, so those, the, those will be the big ones, right? We already know that we probably uh, got some uh, computer stuff be with the high flow cats or, or the, the yeah. race headers. So we'll plug in just like we did on your car. Yep. Look at the engine ECUs and record what's in there. We'll go on the transmission computer and just do a quick parameters check, looking for fault codes, clutch life, see what the PIS is, make a couple quick notes on that, and then just do a general once over on it. Cool. Yeah, All right. nothing crazy. A lot cheaper than the dealership PPI. Yeah, well, you know, my rate's half of what theirs is, so that helps quite a lot, and I know the car. And Once we're done with this, I want to show you one of my consultations just sent me a PPI he got done on a California, and they found $75,000 in shit wrong with the car. And it's... Is 20 of it a transmission? No. Oh. No transmission issue. Oh, wow. Yeah, so you're gonna love this. So we'll go over that. And I said ninety thousand dollar car that needs seventy five grand worth of work. Uh huh. Yeah, <laughs> which I think it's BS. So I'll I'm give gonna, him two grand for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll I want you to give your opinion on this. So we'll, yeah, we'll it'll go over be that. entertaining the read. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. We'll let you have at it. All right. So obviously we'll get it racked up and get the floor pan off it and stuff first. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So while Josh is doing his PPI. I want to talk about this PPI that was sent to me by my viewer who I did a consultation with last night. This is from a dealership in Florida. So he got the PPI done. By the way, the PPI was like $1,600. And what? yeah. <laughs> he, he paid somebody 1600 bucks to find 75 grand worth of work on a California? Uh-huh. Dude, I'm doing it wrong. Uh <laughs> Those guys are getting paid. Yeah. So here we go. Let me show you the catalog of stuff they showed wrong with the car. Interior trim, leather in need of repair, A pillar, front header, rollover bars, binnacle, leather peeling, remove components and send up for repair, $3,187. Inspect interior uh, binnacle, center cover is warped, recommending replacing the binnacle, $2,099. Electrical problem, during PPI inspection found the backlighting LEDs to gear, to gear display in the instrument cluster flicker. Recommend cluster replacement, the entire cluster, because it flickered. $9,112. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Both headlights have been worn plastic, uh, have worn plastic lenses, and the right hand headlight had a dislodged LED. Recommend reconditioning the left headlight and replacing the right hand headlight. Here you go, ready? Take a guess. Take a guess at this one. I'll give you a moment. Ready? Four grand. $14,659. For a single headlight. One replacement, one repair. Inspection charge, inspection charge, blah, blah, blah. Small For 20 bucks, I'll smear some Vaseline on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry, it gets better. Oh, oh, hey, this is actually kind of reasonable. Clear bra needs to be replaced, has turned yellow on the tonneau cover. Just the tonneau. $750. Cheapest thing on the list. Well, that's until they peel the paint off 
<laughs> right, right. Until the paint, until the paint goes with it, then it's like seven grand, right? Yeah, seven. yeah. Because you gotta paint the whole back third of the car. Oh yeah, yeah. As soon as that way. happens, you're like, yeah. Now you're committed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're painting the whole thing. <laughs> I can tell you're finding this entertaining, Josh. Oh, it's lovely. That's sixteen hundred bucks worth. I mean, they didn't fuck around. No, no, they, they found. Pick the car apart. Oh, they found hard. everything. Yeah. Oh yeah. Charge them sixteen hundred bucks and say your car needs a paint correction and an oil change. True. Like that that would feel shitty. At least they. True. They, I mean, yeah, he did get his sixteen hundred worth, but. Yeah. All right, continue it on. We still got. Don't worry, we got more. Gas cap tether is torn. Replacement, five hundred eighty-seven dollars for the tether. A little piece of rubber. Because you gotta buy the whole cap. Probably. Interior trim is sticky. Right hand switch along with the blah blah blah. Yeah, basically sticky buttons. $1,566. Let's see, we know how expensive sticky can get. That can be, yeah, so that's actually a reasonable thing. I actually found that to be probably the most reasonable estimate. Broken buttons, it doesn't say which, $2,045. Engine mounts are collapsed, recommend replacement, $3,500. Engine repair, just says engine repair, $4,000, it doesn't say what. This one's my favorite. Upper sump found seeping oil, recommend remove and reseal the engine. Yes, they want to pull the engine on this car because it's weeping, $17,000. What, what, what? Uh, Perform second annual service, $2,650. Battery and system, uh, car would not start in the lift, start heard whining but would not engage. Recommend starter replacement, $3,440. Windshield washer fluid, A recommend adjustment of nozzles, $115 for the washer nozzles <laughs> to be adjusted. Remote buttons won't or worn off Re recommend replacing the key fourteen hundred and thirty dollars grand total seventy four thousand two hundred and twenty six dollars and five cents jaws will drop and one other thing he was telling me that when he was talking to them on this ppi it says the clutch or the sorry the rotor life on the carbon ceramic rotors is four percent that means they're four percent worn meaning it's got 96 percent of the life left but they said oh no you got to replace the rotors that has four percent left so when he called me and told me hey they said it's got four percent left and i'm like these are carbon ceramics no there's no way you killed these carbon ceramic rotors in twenty thousand miles in california they would have had to track the car all twenty thousand miles to have killed those rotors <laughs> that fast that's another twenty something thousand dollars that they were trying to get on them they're saying that there's almost a hundred thousand dollars in stuff wrong with this car the car isn't even costing a hundred thousand dollars so this is why i'm skeptical skeptical of these ppis oh yeah let me show you the pictures of the the engine weeping oil and the valve cover gasket oh that's what it was one of those was a valve cover gasket but it just says general i'll do half of what they recommended for half the price <laughs> yeah, yeah. hell Oh, you could probably do all of it for the right, half the price and still come out way yeah. ahead. Well, yeah, but it only needs half of it. So you, I'll do half of it at half price and then you'll be fine. <laughs> You'll get another five years out of the car. Okay, here's the, the valve cover gasket leak. Yeah, okay. I'm hey. fine with that because your exhaust system is there yeah. and it wraps around the back of the motor. So I don't like cam cover oil leaks either because that's... that. Could be dangerous. It's something, yeah, it could be. And you can smell it, you know, you got the cabin air intake there and whatnot. There's a bunch of reasons to keep cam covers sealed yeah. pretty well. I mean, yeah, so that one could be worthy. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. Not, it's not bad, but it's worthy. Not necessarily. I'd want to pull the coils and see how the rings around the spark oh, yeah, plugs yeah, yeah. are, because if those are leaking also and oil's getting in there, that will kill the ignition coils. So, yeah. I, you know, that's one worth considering. That. You know, and that's kind of normal. Here's the weeping. They want to pull the engine $17,000 for that. Yeah, I mean, I can see why they're selling it, but yeah, unless there's a big puddle on the floor pan. The California motors are known for having oil leaks the way they're assembled, so you can pull it apart and clean it and reseal it, and in a couple of years it'll start leaking like that again. Yeah. So. There's the collapsed engine mount. Yeah, those I'd replace. That's pretty common in those cars. Is that collapsed? Yeah. Right. Yeah, they're hydraulically filled, and yeah. so this lower uh, skin here is usually actually inverted. Oh, so it's yeah, bubbled out. Exactly. When they uh. when the inner diaphragm fails and they collapse, all that fluid is now being pushed on that bottom skin, and that's why it's pooched oh, okay. downward like that. Okay. And so what happens is is they do collapse enough where now the motor mounts are sitting, the brackets are sitting on the frame. 
So now when you fire the car up and it idles, you can feel it yeah, all yeah. rough. It's it all rough, and especially on shifting, I'm sure it's clunky. And yeah, yeah, it gets really annoying. And I've been told, I haven't seen it yet myself, that sometimes with that, with the motor kind of banging off the frame like that, it'll disrupt the misfire calculations <laughs> and you'll end up with check engine lights for misfires and stuff. So there's, you know, there's a couple of reasons to want to replace motor mounts. So it's probably, he probably should do the motor mounts and the valve cover gaskets then. Yeah. Would be your recommendation. Yeah. Out of all that list of crap. Yeah, everything else was aesthetic basically, right? Yeah. Yeah, a lot yeah. of aesthetics. The, the oil weepage, I mean, hell, he might even just try cranking on the bolts a little bit and see if it squishes you, the gas a little harder. You could try, but the car's got 20,000 miles on it and that's what it's leaking for oil? I mean, come on. Yeah. I ain't worried about that. Yeah. All right. What else? The brakes, I'd want to I'd wanna see the brakes for myself. Well, they showed the, the brake pads were all fine and then they said 4% rotor wear. That's it. But that was the crazy thing is they tried to initially say, no, it's got 4% left on a 20,000 mile carbon ceramic rotor car. It's like complete bullshit. Yeah. Unless you track the yeah. crap out of it. But it's a California. And that's why I said I'm like... Well, not even if you track the crap out of it because they're heavy cars and most people don't know how to drive so they overuse the brakes. So you can actually wear carbon discs down on these cars on the track pretty quickly. Yeah, if you're but real stomping them. On Romeo's, we did uh, brake rotors on his car because they were never tracked. But one of the ways uh, you can usually tell super easily too yeah. is on the carbon ceramics. You know, they're, they're fibers that are pressed together with heat and pressure. Yeah. Right? So they're pretty smooth and shiny. See how you can tell that some of the flake has chipped away because you have these dark spots? Yeah, a little groove yeah. almost. So there's two things that happen with a carbon ceramic rotor when they wear with heat. They do get a little bit thinner, but also flakes and material disappear. So there's actually a mass change, right? So the weight of the rotor changes. Yeah. So you've got the thickness, but then like on Romeo's, I could like these aren't bad at all. But his, when I looked at them, like they were like matte gray. Like they looked. Oh, so they, you couldn't see the little shards in it? Yeah. Well, they were deep shards. Oh. Yeah. Like it looked like someone had dragged sandpaper across them. Interesting. They had no shine sheen to them at all. And so I, I measured them and they were thin and we pulled them off and weighed them and they, the weight spec was below what the recommended yeah yeah and now drive around on the street would they be fine yeah probably but i don't know brakes are pretty important to me i don't like messing yeah. with that once when the manufacturer gives a minimum specification and a safety part like a brake rotor moves below that specification i don't feel that i'm the one to decide how far below that specification is acceptable so we replaced his rotors but he was also able to find a good set of used ones that were a fraction of the price of a brand new set. And there's some aftermarket options and other things. Like there's a couple of ways to solve that problem if it needs to be solved. You could also do a steel rotor conversion because the True. fact of the matter is street driving to California, you don't really care if it has ceramic brakes. The reduced unsprung weight means absolutely nothing to you. Uh, especially compared to the $20,000 repair bill for replacing them. I would want to know for sure on the brakes. Uh, and I've seen people do some weird stuff. I had a California once where the rotors were wrecked because I think someone tried to put like uh, that pink stop squeal. Oh God. Yeah, and it just gummed up and then embedded into oh. the brake rotors. So that car needed a new set of brake rotors. So I've seen some stuff. I'd want to, you know, I'd want to see that one for myself, but yeah, motor mounts and cam cover gaskets probably, and the rest of it, unless it really bothers the guy buying it, I wouldn't worry about it. Gearbox is really the big thing in those cars, as long as the gearbox is in good shape. Yeah, that's, then you're good. That's, that's the killer, because your gearbox fails, car's dead, you're parking it. Yeah. Foggy headlights not gonna slow you down from driving it, you know, <laughs> so. Flickering dash indicator isn't gonna cause you problems. No, but that was good of them. At least now he knows that it's there and what the dealership would charge to fix it. Yeah. S because those do have failures. You know, it, it is the thing in those cars and they can be expensive. There are some guys, I think mostly in Europe, that repair them. But you know, the car's gonna be down for weeks because you gotta pull it, yeah, ship, ship to it Europe. Over. They gotta fix it, ship it back and all of that. So that's nice that they point that out because I don't know about you, but if I bought that car and then two months later, the dash actually quit and then I brought it in and they told me it was gonna cost nine grand to fix. 
I'd be a little disappointed because yeah. I just dropped the 80 grand. So yeah, there I goes probably like don't have nine laying around. More than 10% of the cost yeah. of the car. Yeah, yeah. At least they picked the car apart, you know. I, I am a little concerned that I didn't hear any notations about the transmission, whether it has any leaks or no leaks. Like, it sounds like they only wrote down stuff they found that, you know, they picked apart. There were no, like, this is good and this is good and this is good. Well, that was, that was part one. There was a second page. Okay. Well, there's visual, it's inspect for visual leaks and just as a check saying there's no visual leaks on the transmission. Oh, okay. Gotcha. One of those sheets. Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, I've seen these. Yeah, we had those at the Aston Martin dealership too. Yeah. A lot of people don't understand numbers, but they understand colors. Ooh. So. Pretty colors. Green, yellow, and red. Yeah, very, very easy. In little triangles too. Caution. Yeah, yeah exactly. Ooh. NEW can figure out that's going to cost them money when it's the red triangle that gets tipped. <laughs> well, that's good that there's no leaks and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I would still probably do those couple of things and then buy an aftermarket warranty for that car because still gearboxes have issues in those cars mm -hmm. and the repairs anywhere from 10 to 40 grand depending yeah. on how severe it is and all of that because you can't buy individual sensors they sell you a whole board there's two boards in the car basically with solenoids and sensors and you buy the SAP or a CCP and they're 10 grand each plus the time the R&R of the box and open it up and replace it and put it back together. So Ugh. yeah, repairs are easily 10, 15 grand on the gearbox. That's the crux with those cars. That sucks. Yeah. Rest of that's trivial. It's, it's a ah. car. It's a used car. It's <laughs> fine. Just buy it. By the way, the guy who has that PPI actually has a YouTube channel if you're into watches. So I'm not but I know a lot of you guys who are into cars or into watches. His YouTube channel is called Federico Talks Watches. Actually, he's got like 85,000 subscribers. So I went and watched some of his videos. Like, again, I'm not into watches, so it wasn't my thing, but they look like well done videos and he has interesting topics about watches. So go check them out. All right, so that's how much? 6% worn. So it's got 94% left. Yeah, and you know, that's just a- It's an estimate. Exactly, so it has a brand new clutch. Yeah. Nice. Yep, and so I, I went through and did a full uh, computer system fault scan. So, how'd it do? Uh, fine, it's totaled and I'll give you 500 bucks for it. Shit. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a good car. Uh, it's a used car, so, you know, there's always something to find on a used car. And we found a couple of things, but nothing that's unusual or worrisome or atrociously expensive. So, you'll be able to buy the car and drive it and it'll be fine. And when it bothers him, he can spend some money on it and <laughs> make it nicer. There you go. Typical used car. Hey. Yeah. Again, if you need Josh's help, go to Exotic Power and Performance down here. Uh. <laughs> All right, so there you can see we've got the PPI done. Now this thing should get approved for the financing for my buyer and it should be ready to go. So hopefully we're gonna have this thing out of here quickly. Ultimately, what I wanted to show you is that there's a varying degree of PPIs in that you really need to know what you're buying before you get it. Take some of it with a grain of salt. So keep in mind, if it's coming from a dealership, they're gonna go to the nth degree to try and get some service from you. If it's an indie shop that knows that they're not gonna get any sort of work from you, it's just you know a PPI to make sure that you're kind of getting your due diligence, I don't think they're gonna be quite as ridiculously thorough, but I mean, ultimately, it's not a bad thing to have them be super pedantic, but just kind of keep it with a grain of salt. Like Josh was saying for the PPI for Federico's car, yeah, it sounds scary and they have like $75,000 and stuff wrong with the car, but these aren't like catastrophic, like, oh my God, the car is gonna explode sort of stuff. Most of it was cosmetic and a lot of it was just stuff that you could probably just let go for now, certainly for a long time. Hopefully this was educational for you guys and you found it interesting. So if you did, I would appreciate it if you do like, share, and subscribe. Those things help out my channel and I appreciate it greatly. So thank you very much to those of you that do that. Don't forget to go check out my website, normalguysupercar.com. There we have some cars for sale. You can buy my consultation services. You can even buy shirts like this one. Maybe you devalue cars like I do. Ultimately, all those things do help this channel keep going, so I appreciate it again. Thank you very much. You guys know we have lots of cool car stuff coming away, so you're gonna wanna stay tuned. It's gonna be sweet.